There have been some troubling signs in the economy lately, and uh, some big time investors have been, you know, been looking at this. Now, we've been warning you here on the show for the last year that the U.S. dollar is on the decline, and uh, so, it, you know, if this, hopefully, if you've been watching our show for a year, great. If you're new to the show, you know, subscribe. I'm glad to have you here. We're we're live every morning at 8:30 a.m. Eastern time right here. So please subscribe, hit that little bell notification so you never miss an alert when we're live. Um, and I've been sounding this alarm for over a year that the U.S. dollar is headed for a disaster, and it's all of the signs are mounting. All of the warning signs are there. We now are seeing an incredible uh, we're seeing incredible trouble in the credit market. I've been promising you that I'm going to release this video, a deeper video on this, but I've been sick, so my throat has been out of commission, and I want to do that when I'm feeling a little bit better, so I'll get to that. But two, two legendary investors have something to say right now about the U.S. dollar, uh, and it's not good that the dollar is going to depreciate further versus its peers over the next few years. We're talking about, you know, the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency of the world. Now, what happens if the U.S. dollar is suddenly not the reserve currency of the world? China is sitting there saying to themselves, wait a minute, why are we using the U.S. dollar as our reserve currency? China, which is now basically the global superpower, right? Its economy has done better than the United States over during the pandemic. Do, do you know a percentage of what the dollar has decreased from the 70s till now? Like what in like value? What it, yeah. Just uh, I don't curiosity. have it. From, I don't have it in front of me. I don't have it any, in front of me. Because you just think I think it's like sixty economics. percent. I think it's sixty-seven. It's something like sixty-seven percent of the value of what it was in the nineteen seventies. Yeah. So if you're a country and you've and you heavily invested in the in this dollar, which you had well before the seventies, right? A lot of people had invested in the U.S. dollar, right? And they're sitting there and they're still using it to trade oil because of its status at that time. Like right. you're looking at it decrease and decrease, and it's not it's, it. It never bumps up like crypto or anything like that. It just keep, it's on a steady down curve. So it, it it is a stupid investment to to invest in the dollars. And these countries are not stupid. They're 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 not going to do that because they want our dollar to crash. They'd like nothing more than for it to to go back up because they they're heavily invested in it as much as we are. Right. But it's just not a smart investment. No, it's not. And Jeffrey Gundelach, who is a legendary investor, <clears throat> um, spoke out about this uh, last night. And he says, there's some big warning signs here. I mean, and it's, you know, we see it coming. I mean, the U.S. economy has, it's been run by people who literally almost like don't even know what they're doing with money at this point. Um, it's a pretty, I mean, we're running our economy. What did he say? We're running our economy like we're not interested in maintaining our global reserve currency status anymore. That's basically what he said. Huh. Billionaire bond investor Jeffrey Gundlach, the founder and the CEO of the $137 billion double line capital, says his number one conviction over the years is that the U.S. dollar will decline as a consequence of current global economic policies or current economic policies, resulting in the U.S. losing its sole reserve currency status. And here he is to go deeper in this issue. The U.S. has enjoyed the status of sole reserve currency globally for decades, and it's an, it's an incredible benefit. Uh, we also have the biggest uh, military in, in the world, which is kind of goes hand in glove with being a, a reserve currency, I think. But in the aftermath of the lockdowns and the pandemic that continues to wear on, it, the strongest economy in the world by far has been the Chinese economy. And the U.S. economy has bounced back with a lot of consumption. A lot of that consumption is going to China. It's one of the reasons China has such a strong economy. So what, what we're seeing is the United States is starting to fall behind in economic growth. That's not a new thing that's been going on for a generation, the U.S. falling behind. But the Chinese economy is growing so rapidly that the estimates as to when the Chinese economy will be the largest in the world keep getting pulled forward. Um, you know, 20 years ago, it was thought to be 2050. The Chinese would be bigger than the U.S. and that was 2040. And now it's the estimates are maybe it's in the 2020s, uh, maybe even 2028. The Chinese economy gets bigger and China's made no uh, secret of the fact that they want to be a global player and have at least a seat at the table of global reserve currency status. And they're spending like crazy on military and have also made no secret of the fact that they want their military to be dominant, maybe the, the biggest in the world. 
Also, they have huge savings in China. They have a culture of savings. They sort of the gold medalists of saving uh, historically. And so we put all those things together uh, with the U.S. growing debt like crazy. We're, we're, uh, we have debt to GDP that is fueling the majority of our so-called economic growth. So is, is it really economic growth when you uh, borrow money or print money, send checks to people who turn around and buy goods on Amazon in addition to maybe paying down debt and speculating, and these goods come in from China? So we're running our economy in a way that is almost like we're not interested in maintaining global reserve currency status or the largest military or global, uh, let's call it a uh, superiority or or control so i mean <clears throat> on the military piece i you know you know yes china is ramping up their military spending but i don't i think they have a long way to go before they hit the amount of money we spend on our military for crying out loud well, but yeah, nevertheless spend 10 he, times more than all those countries combined yeah i mean nevertheless though he is right on he's right on the nose as it relates to savings and I mean, Linda here in our chat said, you know, and there's been, I've done stories on this uh, where China has been buying up U.S. farmland um, because, you know, look, China owns like half of our country as it is. You know, the, the, the Canadian government stepped in when they were buying up like all of Vancouver, like, like every building in Vancouver, uh, Canada was, you know, being bought by the Chinese until the Canadian government was like, whoa, 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 wait a second, stop. You know, we want to allow Canadians to be able to buy Canadian property. And so we are running our country like we're not interested in maintaining the global reserve currency status anymore. Well, then I was reading a, an article uh, that if they were to, if China were to want to completely destroy the United States, all they would have to do, and, I, and it wouldn't benefit them to do so, but all they would have to do is flood the market with their, I think it's their, their stocks and bonds or whatever. Like if they just release those into the market, like it would crash because of all the, all the, 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 uh, power they hold in our economy. I believe it. I mean, it doesn't take much to see that. Think about the amount, of, you know, the U.S. government and how much debt we owe to the Chinese. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, at one point, like years ago, it was like five hundred billion a day or something like that. It was some crazy amount of money like that that we borrow from China. Yeah, unbelievable. So, Ray Dalio. Uh, billionaire investor, legendary investor, uh, one of the smartest minds in this space, um, also sees major declines for the U.S. dollar. Um, and he points to what the Federal Reserve has been doing and inflation. I mean, how can you not talk about inflation? How can you not see that we are headed for a disaster as it relates to inflation in, in, the, in the next couple, a couple of months? Well, and the thing is, what's crazy is like when, when the dollar was backed by gold, it had actual value, but once that was removed, these people think that in order to just fix the economy, let's just print some more money. Let's just let's just go in the computer. Let's add a couple more zeros. We're good. Right. They are they are making invisible money, and that is never in the history of mankind or or any kind of ec economy has never ever worked. It always crashes every single time. And every government currency in world history has collapsed. So what makes us think this time would be any different? And the U.S., to your point about debt, <coughs> we are under the largest amount of debt we've ever seen in world history. I mean, and under those similar circumstances, with way less debt, countries have collapsed, economies have collapsed. So why would this be any different? Now we are literally 10 times larger in the amount of debt than we've ever seen in world history. I mean, the, the Lannisters didn't even have this much debt, and they weren't, they weren't going to loan them money. Nobody was going to loan the Lannisters any more money, and they had way less debt than us. <laughs> exactly. So here's Ray Dalio, a brilliant thinker on this, who say, sees these troubling signs for the U.S. economy. Think of the economy as being like a, an individual, in a, and their pulse is dropping. When the pulse is dropping... The doctors come running in with the stimulant and they inject stimulant. Now that the economy is rebounding and inflation pressures are rebounding, um, there's not the same pressure to administer that stimulation. When it happens, when it becomes a problem, is first the rising interest rates start hurting financial asset prices. First, typically they hurt bonds 
then they pass through and hurt stocks because still interest rates affect stocks. And when that starts to affect stocks, that's one thing. Maybe the stock market can correct 10 or 15 percent and the Federal Reserve can tolerate it. When it goes beyond that and starts to affect the economy, that's when you see the real trade-off have to surface. Can I ask a question? Shoot. <clears throat> what rebound is he talking about? <laughs> rebound in in the U.S. dollar or just in the economy? He's talking well, about he the said U.S. The, economy. He said, the, yeah, the economy and also the, the rebound in the inflation. <laughs> like, I, well, I didn't see milk prices go down at all at the grocery store. No, no. I mean, and what he's talking about is what he's talking about is in um, a rebound in the economy, which we've definitely seen. I mean, if you look at if you look at Wall Street, OK, because that's where we re measure these economic, you know, uh, bull signs right now. There's no sign of a bear market. I mean, any investor right now is all excited about the next con like year, year and a half where this is just going to be a continued bull cycle for stocks. And so Wall Street will continue to make just a boatload of money. But what's going to happen is the, the U.S. economy is going to collapse. I mean, U.S. the, the average worker, uh, the, the, the U.S. dollar for the average worker is now going to be worthless. Worthless. So these companies will do well. <clears throat> People make money in the stock market. But the value of the U.S. dollar on the global stage is about to, is about to collapse. So all eyes this week. Because this week we have the Jackson Hole meeting with the Fed, this Friday, with Fed leaders. And <clears throat> the question is, will they continue to spend $120 billion a month buying up all of these crappy corporate bonds <clears throat> that have helped Wall Street? Keeping Wall Street afloat. I mean, they're continuing to pump $120 billion into Wall Street to make sure that Wall Street is secure and liquid. And, you know... So the question will be on tapering. You know, when do they start pulling this back? So everyone is sort of waiting on Friday to see what happens. Um, and this will give us some really clear signals, I think, going forward as to where the U.S. dollar shakes out in all of this. But $28 trillion in debt, government program that continues to funnel money to Wall Street, and they haven't cleared their balance sheets. And when you look at the credit market right now, and you look at that they are f basically pulling money out of the stock market... Uh, and so, and continuing to funnel $120 billion into Wall Street companies at 0% interest rates. Like, how is that possibly sustainable? Well, and, and back in 2012, I know I always talk about Ron Paul and everybody gets all up in arms about Ron Paul or whatever, but that guy was talking about like we, when in 2008, we should have let Bear Stearns and all those, we should have let them collapse. We should have let them go. We should have let Wall Street have a, a major collapse. He said, because like, you're going to recover from that a lot. It, 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 he said it'd be hard. It would be tough. It'd be like a, another basically depression, but you would have recovered and not lost the complete power of the dollar where now if it crashes, there's no coming back. It's right. gone. Right. And, and, you know, where do you put your money? I mean, when you have, when you have no standard, we have no gold standard. So we don't have the U S dollar backed by anything. Now it's backed by debt. That's all it's backed by enormous debt. <clears throat> Well, and and the full faith and credit of the United States. What does that mean, really? And and there's probably maybe even people in chat that might remember in Germany, they had fiat currency. And at the end of uh, their currency, they were actually taking, like it's a, the equivalent of us taking dollar bills, 20s, 50s, 100s, and l using it to start fires in our, in our fireplaces. It was worthless. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this is exactly what's happening in El Salvador, which is a few more days until they... Um, you know, Bitcoin becomes fiat currency there. Um, and Wasn't that tender. the Deutschmark? <clears throat> the Deutschmark. The Deutschmark, yeah. Yeah. So now they're on the euro, of course. But uh, so where do you put your money? I mean, Gundelach says you know, he's still very, very bullish on gold. I mean, gold, even in this dip period right now, might be the perfect opportunity to buy gold uh, because of this, you know, uh, you know, gold has this sort of soft position right now. But I'm telling you, gold, uh, you know, as a store of value for 4,000 years hasn't gone anywhere. But and how do people that are living paycheck to paycheck invest in gold? Like, I can't take gold down to the grocery store and buy food for my family. Like, what what do you do in that situation? Like, what does somebody well, do this? Because there's so many people here that are living paycheck to paycheck. They're, they're, they, they can't even do it. Like, they're waiting for a stimulus in order to do something. Like, what do they do? 
Well, and that's the thing, right? So gold as a store of value, that's what I'm talking about as a store of keeping it in the bank permanently as a, as a, you know, taking those US dollars and turning those into gold, right? If you have US dollars, turning that into gold, okay, or crypto, Bitcoin, other assets, or real estate. Um, but as far as liquidity, then that's where we need to have, you know, that's where I think crypto is such a huge, you know, a huge future for people to be able to use a digital currency, a digital wallet to be able to make those transactions. Because that's the big problem with gold, right, is that it is illiquid. What are you going to do with a bar of gold? What are you going to do with coins of gold? You know, um, if you keep it in a safe or you keep it in some inter intermediary location. Um, but I would read, there's a, we have a whole gold kit that you can read for free. Our friends over at Birch Gold have it. It's just, if you go to morninginvest.com slash gold, you can read all about it on their gold kit. And it's a free download, so you can learn more about it. That's where I buy my gold is through Birch Gold. Um, and you can buy, you know, small amounts of it. So if you've got money sitting in the U.S. dollar right now in a bank account that's just sitting there, I'm, that's specifically who I'm talking about. I, you know, if you don't have any savings, and that's I, unfortunately that's not who I'm talking to right now, but if you do have some savings, you see that the U.S. dollar is continuing to lose money every month, every month. Why would you keep your family's future tied up in that? Why? So just go to morninginvest.com slash gold. Check out that free gold kit. Um, Again, they're not a sponsor or anything, but I, that's where I get my gold from Birch Gold. So go check them out and you can start to invest in gold or silver. Silver, uh, a lot of people believe, has the biggest upside right now. So silver could potentially be and for a fraction of the cost of gold. The precious metals, Bitcoin, um, you know, Ethereum, other cryptocurrencies right now. You know, I'm not, I'm not telling you what to invest in. You know, go do your own due diligence. Figure it out for yourself. But personally... You know, I'm not, a, and I, like I say, I'm not a financial advisor, but personally, this is where I'm putting my money into these assets because um, we see the writing on the wall for the U.S. dollar. Why would you want to have your, um, your future tied to that, tied to the U.S. dollar? So please, please, please be very, very careful. Yes, I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> you have to say that. I guess people think like, oh, is he a financial advisor? Financial advisors are idiots, by the way. <clears throat> Financial advisors, most of them, uh, you know, tell you to invest in the stock market. They tell you to invest in assets that they're making money off of. So, you well, know, and, and you I, don't have to like it. It doesn't take they they. So I saw I watched a documentary that was pretty eye opening where it showed that uh, you know Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi, uh, and other people over in the Middle East, which is why I think there's such a conflict over there. They have wanted to start trading oil and gold in the dunar uh, and a couple other uh, forms of gold. Because they understand that gold is not going to ever lose value, whereas they're right now they're trading oil in a currency that is g decreasing every single day. It gets worth less, and so mm -hmm. they're trying to be smart because they're investors too, and it makes sense for them. So if they're trying so hard to get it to be traded in gold, then that should tell you something. Exactly. And by the way, history—you know—you must learn from history. Four thousand years of history. Gold has been around for 4,000 years as a currency and as a store of value. So why would you think any differently now? Yes, it's difficult to transport. Yes, it's difficult to extract. It's not as liquid or fung and movable as cryptocurrency, etc. Yes. But the U.S. dollar? Like, you want your future tied to that? So, I, you know, I'm a big believer in precious metals. Uh, they're not going anywhere. There's a finite amount and... You know, we um, we continue to use it as a store of value worldwide. Um, so maybe we'll move back to the gold standard. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> the U.S. economy back to the gold standard. It's not going to happen, but it would be nice to think that that would happen. Yeah, no, and and change the Keynesian. I don't know if you do any research on the Austrian uh, mm -hmm. economics model versus the Keynesian model that we're in right now. The Keynesian model is is taking money by force, where the Austri Austrian model is not. It's a it's a completely different model. And if you look at it, it's just like the Keynesian model is, is the what we're doing. It's like the Alan Greenspans of the world. Print, 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 print. And even he, mm -hmm. at the end of his career, was like, this isn't going to work. You know, gold yeah. is still uh, valuable. Like he, I think he kind of regretted the way that he looked at finance when he was leaving. Do you remember that? How he was kind of like... Oh, yeah. I did a whole video here a few weeks ago on Alan Greenspan and what he, you know, well, he was a fan. He was always a fan of gold. That's the thing that all of these Fed chairmen are always fans of gold. But then they get into the Fed and they can't be fans of gold anymore suddenly. Why? Because they need to be the corporate man, the company man, right?
and they need to support the U.S. dollar. Um, and then they leave the Fed and they go back to liking gold again because the U.S. dollar is not backed by gold anymore. And so Alan Greenspan, I mean, I, f- I featured a segment here on the show where I, f- I showed a clip of him from uh, right after he left office as, as Fed chair. And he said, you know, the U.S. dollar, he's like, you know, it's basically not, it's worthless. It's not tied to anything. And gold is where it's at. Like, well, why didn't you say that while you were Fed chair? You couldn't because it would undermine the system. That's the truth. Mm hmm. I remember yeah. I remember the time him and Ron Paul would go back and forth because Ron was on the committee and it was like arguing about gold and, and Greenspan actually had to argue against gold. Yeah. And then he had to be the left, company was, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they work it, man. That's how it goes. Got to argue against this crap all the time. They play this game <clears throat> back and forth, back and forth. So that's my take on that. I have one more story I want to get to here in a minute. Um, uh, just watching what's going on here um, on some some breaking news, but just keeping my eyes on the on the markets. What's happening? You're watching here. tennis, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just watching just watching a Rafael Nadal match. <laughs> Play uh, Boris no. Boris uh... Boris Yeltsin. <laughs> you know, what was that? What was that really good tennis player? The German Bjorn, Boris? Bjorn Borg. No, not not Bjorn Borg. No. Boris Beck. Beck. Boris Johnson. <laughs> Boris <laughs> Boris Becker. Yeah, Boris, Boris Becker, Johnson that was it. <clears throat> Boris Johnson's an excellent tennis player. <laughs> I would like to see that. I'd like to see, see him play Trump. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> my God. They'd have a heart attack after like oh one my gosh. round. Oh, man. <clears throat> Thank you for your super chats, um, Tanda. Are they going to do stimulus checks multiple or are they not trying to keep us destitute? I, I don't know if they're going to do multiple. I, I don't even know I, you know, if they're going to do actual stimulus one. checks. <laughs> yeah, I know. Actual stimulus checks at all. You know, that's the big question. Um, so, you know, that, that'll be, that's what I'm watching to see is like what is actually going to be handed out. We'll see the extension of the child tax credit as part of this new stimulus. That's good. Uh, but uh, as far as like where this thing goes next, I'm not entirely sure. We'll see if they want to hand out extra actual checks. Yeah, I'm I'm going to say no. Yeah. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.